Hello, everyone across the country. Welcome to the annual CFL draft version of KCU. Before we get to some draft speculation, let's get to some CIS news. And we start with the East-West Bowl. The annual game for players going into their senior year is back for a second year at McGill. The East is comprised of the RSEQ, the AUS, and the three former OQIFC teams, Carleton, Queens, and Ottawa. Blake Nell will lead the West, while Danny Machocho will lead the East in a rematch of the Vanier Cup. Headliners include Nate Bahar of Carleton, Rashawn Simonize of Calgary, Danny Vandervoort of McMaster, and Mitch Hillis of Saskatchewan. As well, two players from Calgary with Adam Lorenz and Robert Woodson. The most daunting rebuilding job in the nation is in Halifax, where former UBC defensive coordinator James Colsey III moved four time zones to take the helm with the St. Mary's Huskies. Part of the challenge for Colsey will be recruiting with a late start on the job. Before I got here, we had already signed 20 guys, you know what I mean? And um, that was the biggest thing I needed to do with spring practice. I needed to know where we were as a team, um, what, what, what positions needed to be addressed. Um, I still think there's some junior football players that we can still kind of go after. I'd go, I'm, I'm leaning towards going in that market. Uh, but it's expensive to try to get kids in from America. I mean, I'm, even as an American coach and being American, it's, an, it's, an, it's, an, it's a pretty expensive deal. So um, we did just sign a big-time quarterback from America. But overall, I want to touch, I want to get mm -hmm. dip in a little bit to junior football and see what else is still out there if I needed to. What are your prospects in the AFL, the uh, OFC, and uh, in the Western provinces? Well, we, we got a couple D linemen. I mean, our, our biggest need to address is our is our defensive line position right now. Defensive line and offensive line, which I think is in all provinces, to be honest with you, which is every team in, in the CIS needs to up, probably upgrade their offensive line and defensive line. But for us, we got a couple guys that we're dealing with in Calgary that that are looking for opportunities, and I think they can be they, they can help us right now. Um, I think we're pretty good as far as our running backs and wide receivers go. D I mean, believe it or not, Jim, this team is actually very young. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to guys defensively. We're looking at about 10 of our 10 of our starters coming back with two or three years left. You know, offensively, like I said, we I think we addressed our quarterback situation with Rock Berglund coming in, who was a you know, he was a four star recruit an ESPN four star recruit played at Kansas. So I think we're going to be OK at our quarterback position, still dipping a little bit. Uh, with maybe one or two kids that are at Division One schools in America at the running back position. But this is Canadian football. I have to fill my roster and get kids from Canada, and that's what I plan on doing. How have you uh, prepared to adjust yourself for the kind of defensive style that's played in the AUS? Well, I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a heavy conference, obviously. Uh, it's a heavy run in conference. You know, you look at some of the scores throughout the year, and, you know, it's 14-13, 17-6. Uh, um, I don't think I'm going to... I know what I want to do on offense. I know what I, you know, obviously what I want to do on defense. Uh, but I want to probably, we'll probably add a little more up tempo to our offensive scheme and maybe hopefully catch them by surprise a little bit. But defensively, I know I'm going to have to probably be a little bit more forward down than I normally am, especially with the big time running backs that are in this conference. But, you know, it, it's, it's a tough conference. We knew getting ready for St. FX that we were going to have some big linemen that we were having to deal with, some big defensive linemen we were going to have to deal with. And we were, we were prepared to have to, you know, go into the fourth quarter with it being a low-scoring game. Obviously, that wasn't something that we necessarily had to worry about when we played St. FX, but you're right, Jim. It's a completely different conference. It's a lot more slowed down, but we're hoping to be a little bit more up-tempo offensively, um, and then, you know, just defensively, just we have to be able to stop the run, and that's something that we definitely know. And being with Coach Neal last year, I don't think there was a sentence where he didn't mention the AUS conference. He always talked about CIS football will be a lot. You know, it's a great, it's great football. But when the AUS conference is good, it makes everything around the conference a lot better. So that's what we're striving for. And, and once we can get, you know, the AUS, uh, the representative maybe be a little bit stronger throughout the CIS, that's what we're looking for. And that's what we're leaning to do. The effort to expand national competition has been a marathon, not a sprint, surrounding the CIS and their conferences. We had an opportunity to talk with Laurier head coach Michael Falds, who is an avid supporter of the eight-team national playoff proposal. It creates more football. It creates more inter-conference games, more out-of-conference games. 
um, but it's in a meaningful time of the year. So now you're going to see uh, matchups from Can West against, you know, whether it's Ontario or the Quebec League, um, but in a real meaningful game. Brian Towers has led the Saskatchewan Huskies for 32 seasons and has a different take on what a national schedule should look like. Yeah, well, I think it has to be driven at the conference level to start with. I know there has been conversations with Canada West and, uh, and the RSEQ. Uh, where those have gone, I don't know. Those are at the athletic director level. But uh, I don't think you will find too many coaches in the country that, uh, that wouldn't support the, the interlock again. And, uh, uh, just the opportunity to play different opponents every week and uh, and grow the game. So um, financially, it, it, it's it's always an issue, but uh, you know, again, hopefully, we're working towards it, and it will be driven by the conferences. All three coaches' full interviews will be available this week on our YouTube channel. Meanwhile, in the CJFL, they've moved forward with an interlocking schedule for 2016. The Canadian Bowl champion Saskatoon Hilltops will visit Kelowna to take on the Okanagan Sun September 17th, while the Valley Huskers will host the Winnipeg Rifles that very same day. The CJFL also announced that the Ontario Football Conference will phase out their 24-year-old age limit. By 2017, the OFC will return to a 22-year-old age limit, which will allow them to compete for the Canadian Bowl with the PFC and the BCFC. When we return, it's the draft preview. Stick around. The CFL and our partners at Football Canada want to make sure we keep growing, promoting, and investing in a safe game. Hit! Football Canada now requires all amateur coaches to be safe contact trained by 2017. By creating a standard of safety for all in our football community, we're making an already great game even better. Make sure your youth coach is safe contact trained, because making a safe game means making a better game. And welcome back to the annual draft edition of Crown Countdown U. Pleased to be joined by Canada West color commentator Gord Randall. And from Regina, former CIS coach and CFL scout Craig Smith. Craig, good to have you along. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, before we dive into the draft pool, let's take a look at the CFL Scouting Bureau. Brampton's Devon Smith, the receiver out of Iowa, ran a sub 4440 at his pro day has worked his way into the NFL draft discussion, as has Manitoba defensive lineman David Onyemata. The rest of the top 20 is backloaded with CIS players in a year where it can be argued it's a bit of a low cycle north of the border. Now, we've had a chance to go through the numbers of CFL Combine and various pro days, Gord. Which players are trending up and which players are trending in the wrong direction in your mind? Well, there's a couple names that came out of the CFL Combine as real trenders up. The one guy at the top of the list is Brian Jones, the big receiver out of Acadia. This guy blew away scouts with his athleticism. He also blew them away with his natural catching ability and route running ability, which was said to be particularly impressive for a large man. Uh, he can be a big weapon at the next level. The other guy that jumped from way off the board to get his name even into the first round conversation for some people was Michael Couture, the local product here from the Lower Mainland, Burnaby, British Columbia, out of Simon Fraser University. He really impressed with his physicality and one-on-ones and brought his name into the conversation from way off the board. Craig, uh, your thoughts. Who's up? Who's down? Well, you know, there's a kid that I've been watching, and obviously uh, I visited all the schools last year, and the, the uh, kicker punter from UBC, uh, Quinn Van Gilswick, I think that he is definitely going to get some interest down there, whether he goes down or not. Um, you know, the kid, his punting, as uh, Blake Mill has said, is just crazy. Um, he was uh, real good at field goals. And he, 60, not so much as far as a, a kickoff guy. They like to have a 70-yard guy. This, you know, Van Gilswick is a 65-yard type guy. Um, you know, but I think he, he could possibly get some uh, look down south. Craig, we've mentioned Smith and Anya Mata, whose roads will likely weave through the NFL draft. You've been in the decision room. What makes you either hold or roll the dice on a future prospect like one of these two guys who could end up in the NFL for a while? Well, most of the time when you're, you're in the draft rooms, um, 
it depends obviously on the philosophy of your team. Most, most places that I've been, we've needed a player or wanted a player to come in and play. And we haven't had a lot of picks. Usually when you have a lot of picks, then you can take, uh, take some of those kids that are, uh, that are possible NFL guys for down the road. But if you don't have that luxury, you're going to have to uh, you know, try to get somebody in and help you, uh, you know, either on the offensive line, special teams, uh, something like that. Now you've got Laval offensive linemen, you've got mid-sized durable receivers like Doug Corby or Brian Jones like Gore just mentioned, or even on the CFL side with the BC Lions awful record with first rounders. Gords, what trends do you see developing over the first two rounds? Uh, well, I do see that this NFL interest is going to be, and I see this happening over the years, is that this is going to be increasingly a factor. A lot of the guys in the top 10 in this draft are guys that we've heard the NFL floating around, particularly a lot of the Canadian talent coming out of the NC2A this year. On top of that, I'm seeing a lot of teams that have a lot of Canadian needs across the board, so it's becoming increasingly difficult for me to pinpoint one overarching need for a lot of these teams. Uh, Craig, last year we moved from non-imports to national players, and in many cases, some of these guys have a tenuous connection to Canada. Uh, the case of Alex Singleton is a real head shaker for me. Here's a kid from Thousand Oaks, California. He's a native of California, a Montana State grad, and he's been on two NFL practice rosters, but he could be considered for the draft. What is going on with this file? Well, it's, it's, it's quite something, actually, and, you know, that kid wasn't added to the draft list, uh, I think it was January, um, and he's, he's probably going to be a kid that you'll, you'll want to take pretty high. He's got loads of ability. He's a, uh, he he kind of reminds me of Sherritt. You know, he's a tackling machine. He's very instinctive. Um, it, it's, it's pretty crazy to have a guy, obviously, coming in. I, I had not looked at anything with regards to him, and then all of a sudden he's on the draft board. So it's, uh, it, you know, it, and, and it's going to happen more and more uh, with regards to uh, not, or <laughs> keep on saying non-imports. It's the Nationals, um, you know, with regards to, you know, guys coming in. Okay, let's get to the first round, and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are on the clock. The rumor this week is that the Riders are looking to trade this pick, but assuming they don't, Let's go to a guy who knows something about the Riders. Right back to Craig. Uh, who should the Riders take a look at first overall? Well, you know, the philosophy, my philosophy is offensive line and guys that are going to help come in with uh, special teams like a bigger DB or a linebacker. And when you look at their, uh, their non-import, here we go again, their nationals, um, they only have one linebacker, Cancalongo. So I, I think that, you know, there's a chance that may, they may uh, go after a linebacker, uh, you know, possibly a, a kid like Corny or Singleton. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens, but uh, hey, offensive line, you know, the big kid from Oklahoma or any of those Laval kids or the SFU kid, I mean, those are all pretty good choices. I like the possibility of Taylor Loeffler here as a guy who potentially could move up and play well to address that linebacker need. But the guy that stands out for me here, and this is going to be your first NFL asterisk of the afternoon, but Arian Colcahoon, the kid out of Michigan State, a tremendous athlete, comes out of a school in the States that's a big-time school with a big reputation for producing defensive backs and fills a need for the Rough Riders on the back end where they need to increase the speed and increase the Canadian content in their back seven on the defensive side of the ball. Now, I have Josiah St. John, the offensive lineman out of Oklahoma. We know Ben Heenan's not coming back from the NFL. Now that he's retired, St. John can work into the rotation now that he's available. Now, Winnipeg forfeited their first round pick by going to the supplemental draft list last year. So with the third pick, the Montreal Alouettes are on the clock. TikTok Gord. Here's where I have Josiah St. John going. He gets into a great situation if he really thinks that he's going to be a tackle or the coaching staff thinks he's going to be a tackle behind Jeff Parrott. Uh, Josh Burke has moved on, but they also have Jacob Ruby, their last year's draft pick, slotted in as their other tackle at the current time. This is a program that has a lot of history of producing national offensive line talent, really cultivating it. I think it's a great fit for them if Josiah St. John's on the board. Craig, you know Jim Pop's track record. He can be pretty unorthodox at times, can he? Absolutely. He sure can. He, you never know what's going to happen there. Um, I believe that they may need a, or they need a receiver. I think that the Jaguar was the only guy that they had. They lost the Laurier, and I think that there's a possibility, you know, maybe Brian Jones, uh, somebody like that, or Felix Fulbert-Lucier. I, I love this kid. He, he kind of 
Reminds me of Claremont, and he may be a little faster. He's a big kid, he runs good routes, he catches everything, he's got beautiful hands, and it would be a natural to be in Montreal. Well, I had troubles with this one, so instead of trying to get inside Jim Pop's head, I'll go to the best Quebec player available. And of course, we are recording this before the NFL draft, so I'm assuming the Boston College defensive end Mehdi Abdesmad will not be getting drafted. He'll be going to the Alouettes, even if they have to wait through free agency and practice rosters. As for the BC Lions, who are up next, I wasn't a big fan of their selections in the top rounds over the last few years. They needed help on offensive line. They ignored a great group from last year. If they choose to address a need, they will go with East-West Shrine invitee Charles Valancourt, the O-lineman from Laval. In my opinion, the Rouge or O-lineman are actually highly undervalued on the scouting bureau board, Gord. Well, if there's one thing that you know from the BC Lions under this current regime is that if you think that there's a big logic behind their first round pick, that's probably not the guy they're picking. Uh, last year's first round pick made me do one of these. So I, I really have no feel for who they're gonna take here. But if I were them, uh, offensive line has been a well-publicized need for them. I think with D Dan Durazio coming back into the fold, I think they think they can cobble together an offensive line. If I'm them, I'm looking at the combine superstar that they seem to like, Brian Jones, the big man out of Acadia. This guy stands 6'4", 223. As I mentioned off the top, he blew people away at the combine, and Craig actually stole my comparison for him on the last pick, but I see a lot of Jason Claremont in him as well, and that's the last decent Canadian receiver that the Lions have really had. With Austin Colley retiring, they have a big void there too. So, Craig, do you go for need or do you go for the best athlete available if you're the BC Lions here? You know, that's a good question, obviously. Uh, um, again, offensive line are, are gold, and with Durazio going back there, I'm pretty sure he's going to be in that draft room. I've been in the draft room with him, uh, you know, f uh, trying to get an offensive line, but I think that uh, a DB or a receiver, I think they could be going after something like that, like Taylor Loeffler. Wouldn't that be something for a UBC kid to be going to uh, the BC Lions? Um, uh, and the possibility, um, you know, like Gord said, with regards to uh, uh, Jones, I mean, that would be a great pick for them. Either one of those kids could go in there and, and, and do some, uh, you know, be a starter. Last year, the Argos knew that Calgary center Sean McEwen was going to exhaust every possible NFL opportunity before they had a shot. So do they gamble on a Tavon Smith or a David Onyemata this time around, Craig? Well, Tavon Smith would be an a great pick for them. You know, they're pretty solid with regards to their uh, their nationals. I think they've got a lot of depth and, and to uh, to go out and, and get him uh, in, in this spot, I think it would be uh, an excellent choice. Uh, since I've been doing this, Tavon Smith is, is one of the better ones that have come out. He, he does so many things well. When you watch the film, he's got beautiful hands. He's got that separation. You know, guys, he, he ran yeah, at his pro day, some guys had him in the, in the uh, high four threes. He, he brings a lot. The only thing about that is once you get in four threes, the NFL is, is nipping at their heels. So it may be a while, but, uh, you know, that would be a pretty darn good pick for Toronto. Tavon Smith, I think, is a strong possibility here as well. Uh, Toronto has enviable offensive line depth amongst their nationals now. Uh, he's a Toronto kid, and I think with an underwhelming and injury-plagued senior season, they think that there's a chance that he gets through the NFL draft. But the other big need for the Argos is they only have two national defensive backs signed, and Taylor Loeffler, if he's still on the board here, as I have him on the board, uh, is, the, is the pick for them. Uh, best DB available, and it's purely a need-based pick. If Cole Cahoon falls this far, I think he's a strong possibility here as well. That's right. You've got Cole Cahoon. You've got Ely Buka, who you can't count out. Uh, he's from the UFC, and he sat out last year with an Achilles injury. Or you've got Loeffler from UBC. And a lot depends on that NFL draft with Cole Cahoon. So if the dime falls in his direction south of the border, I think Toronto picks Loeffler as well. The Hamilton Tiger Cats are next. They're a team who's stocked up on CIS talent, especially on their front seven over the last few years. Gord, do they go in another direction? No, well, they, they do somewhat. They go over to the offensive side of the ball. They focused a lot on the defensive side of the ball, and it's scary the kind of depth they have, particularly on the defensive line. But on the offensive side of the ball, they've got some holes to place on to fill on that offensive line. So they don't overthink this one. They go with Charles Viancourt is still on my board. He's probably the most pro-ready offensive line prospect in this draft. He's a guy that can step in from day one 
and be at least a league average starter. I think Hamilton takes him, plugs him in, and walks away laughing because they didn't think he'd last this long. Craig, what do you think that Hamilton's needs are at this point? There, there's a couple. Uh, they have Fantuz and Watt. Those are the two uh, non-imports that are uh, that are there now. Obviously, Andy's 32, and uh, you know he's had some injuries. Watt is coming back from an injury. Um, do they go to be a, a wide go for a wide receiver? Uh, there's a chance, and we've gone through a number of different wide receivers. You know, maybe maybe a guy like Blasco could could uh, jump up into that. Uh, uh, you know, to, for for them to take him or a DB, Mike Daly. He he's uh, the only yeah, with Butler being hurt. Mike Daly, he's the only guy that's been around to uh, to start. So maybe a DB could be taken. A kid from Southern Illinois, the Thompson kid. He ran really well. He's a four four three kid. Um, he's a safety. Comes, he's physical, he'll come up and knock you. Um, you know, that could be a possibility. Well, Craig, I'm going to take uh, your inspiration and go with O lineman in this category because when in doubt, you go O line in the uh, CFL draft. And when in doubt, go Laval. So I'm going to go with the power lifter, uh, Philippe Gagnon, who had those uh, 40 lifts in the bench press. Let's move on to Calgary now. His combine numbers may have been a letdown, but it would be a good, feel good story. If Calgary Dino Mercer Timmis ended up as a Stampeder and with Jerome Messam re-signing and Matt Walter sent packing, Timmis would be a great fit here. If Calgary passes on him, I see a fit in Winnipeg uh, with one of the two picks that they have to begin the second round. Your thoughts, Gord? Uh, I think Timmis finds a home and there is an RB fit here. Let's not forget he wasn't much of a factor last year, but John Cornish, one of the great Canadian running backs of all time, just retired as well. There is a void there for Calgary, but I think that they're happy with Messam and I think that they need some help in the receiving core and I think they'll have their eye on a guy like Queen's Doug Corby, a guy who is a supremely talented receiver, basically carried that Queen's offense last year and that people are still talking about his performance from the East-West Bowl a little over a year ago now. Uh, this guy a guy that is a first round talent and I see a good fit here for the Calgary Stampeders. Craig, uh, your thoughts on the Stamps? I agree, uh, Jim. I, I, you know, Timmis, with Messam being a Canadian, he goes down. You know, the ratio is such a critical thing to have seven players, uh, Canadian kids, uh, starting. So I think that uh, if, if they got Timmis, I think it would be a good fit. I don't care what he ran at the Combine. Um, you know, the kid ran a 1-5-0-10, and that was better than some of the guys that were in the uh, NFL draft, and Ezekiel Elliott and uh, the Drake the kid from El Alabama. He's got just beautiful, beautiful uh, explosion, hits the hole, beautiful vision. Um, he doesn't have that top end speed, but he's a good, solid running back, and if they took him, I think that would be good. And I agree with you with regards to Winnipeg, too, with Andrew Harris being a Canadian running back that's going to start. I think it's going to be a, a pretty good thing there as well. So Timmis, he's definitely going to get a home. Ottawa is now on the clock, and we'll go straight back to you, Craig. Ottawa is an interesting thing. You know, they lost Scholigan. Um, um, they got Hines, uh, you know, from the, uh, the uh, Edmonton Eskimos. Um, possibly a defensive tackle, defensive lineman. Does the, the Winters kid from Miami of Ohio, is he a guy that they, you know, that they may... Uh, get in to help Zach Evans as a defensive tackle um, or do they go DB and you know we've gone through a lot of DBs um, you know there's there's a bunch of them that uh, that could possibly be there maybe Buka maybe he finds a home there as well so um, I, you know, that's that's my thoughts with regards to Ottawa. I think Ottawa has a receiver need as well. It's uh, Brad Sinopoli, and then I don't really know who else at this point in time. And the next guy on the board for receivers is a, another guy that really impressed at the Combine in a lot of ways, Brett Blasco. This is another guy coming off of a bit of a down year last year. He was probably more hyped coming into this draft at this time last year than he is now. But he's starting to build the buzz up again. A guy who can compete for physical yardage, not going to blow the roof off the top and stretch the field that much, but he's going to make tough catches for you and get tough yards for you. Well, we've talked about Brian Jones from Acadia. We've talked about Fulbert Lucier from Lavelle. And we've talked about Doug Corby from Queens, who uh, people really took notice of during the East-West Bowl last May. Those are the three receivers who can help you right away behind Sinopoli. All three of those guys will go somewhere in this low first to mid-second round. But technically, Fulbert Lucier checks off all the boxes for me here. Uh, the Grey Cup champion Edmonton Eskimos are up. What say you, Gord? 
Well, Jim, you said this earlier on in the show, when in doubt, go offensive line. And for the Edmonton Eskimos, they lost Andrew Jones this offseason that cut into their national depth on the offensive line. You can never have enough of that. There is a potential receiver need as well with Shamad Chambers leaving the nest. But the top three receivers for me are already off the board at this point. And they did not think this guy would last this long, I believe. But Philip Gagnon is the guy for me, a guy who's a real road grader. And they're pretty happy with him. I think Michael Couture is a possibility here as well because of the way that the board falls for me, but I think that they're definitely going offensive line if things fall the way that I see them. Craig, Edmonton's got uh, non-import slash national needs all over the place, don't they? Well, you know, the, the receiver-wise, they're, they're pretty solid, you know, with adding Getzlaff and, um, um, you know, there, there's holes. I think they're just going to add depth. And like you guys have been saying, when in doubt, go offensive line. And, and there's, there's a plethora of offensive linemen that can come and help uh, uh, and, and why not go with any you know the Laval guys uh, uh, Carl Brennan does a great job it's almost like he's got it's a cookie cutter deal where he just uh, you know he produces offensive linemen and, and any one of those kids could go in you know they had Gruel I think last year I think he was one of the guys that had been there before why not get another Laval offensive lineman to go uh, keep him company Blair Smith and Adam Cohen are the only Eskimos national linebackers. The non-Canadian Canadian from the Seahawks and Montana State Alex Singleton goes to the Eskimos. But I think their real need could be addressed at kicker punter with UBC's Quinn Van Gilswick. So there you see our boards up on the screen right now. And a lot can change between the NFL draft, trades, and free agent signings. But at least we hope we've got the discussion going. Thanks to Craig Smith in Regina. Thanks for having me. And Gord Randall here in the studio. A reminder that the season actually starts with the East West Bowl in Montreal May 14th. You can watch online or if you're in the neighborhood, let's get out to the game.